Okay, I'll go ahead and start. Welcome to the Monday, July the 6th meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. I will let members and staff introduce themselves. Go ahead. Gilbertson. Martha, uh, Martha, why don't you go next and then we'll do Liz. Martha Smirsky. Liz Pritchett. This is Hannah Smith. You're muted, Seth. Is Seth here? Seth Mitchell, yep. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, and then, Steve, did you introduce yourself already? And Steve Everett, yes. Okay. And then uh, Meredith Crandall here as zoning administrator. And then we also have one other city staff today. Hi, everyone. I'm Cameron Niedermeyer. I'm the assistant city manager, and I will be helping Meredith moderate today. Thank you. And Meredith, would you like to review the remote meeting procedures? I will. I think everybody who's on here, except for maybe John, has done this before, but um, I'm going to share my screen so that anybody who's viewing via ORCA can see how to log into the meeting if need be. So give me just one second to pull up the right document. All right. And there's the most important stuff right there in the middle. Um, so due to the state of emergency declared by Governor Scott as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and pursuant to Addendum 6 to Executive Order 0120 and Act 92, the Design Review Committee is authorized to meet electronically. Um, there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting. However, in accordance with temporary amendments to the open meeting law, the design review committee is providing public access to the meeting by hosting a video conference meeting, including both video and telephone access options via the Zoom um, app. Um, all members of the design review committee have the ability to communicate at the same time during this meeting through this platform, and the public has access to listen and if desired participate in this meeting in real time by either joining the meeting at this link right here, um, or you can call into the meeting at 929-205-6099 for either of those options. The meeting ID um, and password are highlighted there and they're in red. Um, we previously gave notice to the public of this information for accessing the meeting um, on, on our posted meeting agenda, um, as well as um, which is posted throughout the city and on the website. And you can also get that full agenda here at the pending applications for public hearing link. Um, if anyone has a problem accessing the meeting, please email the meeting moderator, Cameron Niedermeyer, at this email here, C Niedermeyer at Montpelier-bt.org. Um, further, if you are in the Zoom meeting and are having issues um, with accessing video options or otherwise, you can message Cameron through the chat function in Zoom. Now, when it comes to the details of participating in the meeting, if you have logged in, um, you should have an opportunity to tell either the moderator or myself which applications you wish to comment on. Um, currently, everybody who's logged in, since we only have one application, I know what, what our issues are, but um, in future, if somebody from the public logs in or somebody logs in and has something they want to comment on that isn't necessarily on the agenda, um, you can announce what you want to comment on when you log in. Um, and then when the chair announces the time for public comment on an application arrives or other matter, the moderator will unmute members of the public based on the order you submit your intent. Um, Zoom has updated things lately so that for some people, the moderator can't unmute you. So we may have to ask you to unmute yourself if you start talking and, and it doesn't get unmuted on its own. Um, if you're interested in speaking and did not say that you would like to see, speak previously, please raise your hand if you're using the video options or unmute yourself and state your name during a, a quiet time if 
um, once you're unmuted, and then city staff will add you to the queue of people to discuss. Um, once the chair has recognized you to participate, the moderator will unmute your microphone or confirm that you have done so. You're then free to provide your questions or comments, aiming to keep them to two minutes. Um, members of the committee will have the opportunity to respond to your comments or ask questions of you, or the applicant may have an opportunity to respond. And the chair may grant additional time for speakers who have follow-up questions or comments. After you have finished speaking, um, your microphone will be muted again. The chair will then call the next person to speak. Um, if there's multiple matters that you want to talk on, you'll be allowed to, but you need to wait till the chair recognizes you. In the event the public is unable to access this meeting, then we will need to continue it to a time and place certain. Um, so both Cameron and I will be keeping an eye on that if somebody's trying to log in um, and can't make the access. Um, please note that all votes taken during this meeting that are not unanimous will be done by roll call vote in accordance with the law. Now I'll hand this back over to Steve and I will stop sharing for the moment. Okay, thank uh, you, Steve. Steve, uh, this is yes. Eric. I, I should make a statement about uh, my little prior involvement in this. Uh, Jay asked me to write a letter for uh, the FEMA flood proofing uh, like regulations that the work that's being done would not affect the National Register eligibility or take it off the National Register. And I, I did that, uh, Meredith has a copy, and uh, uh, I was very carefully stated that this was only for the, this letter was only for this sole purpose and uh, not any of the other standards that might be put on the project. Okay, thank you, Eric. Your statement is noted, and I'm not sure it, if it has any effect on your ability to review and vote for the project. And I'm just doing it for transparency. Okay. No, that's that's fine. Thank you very much. Do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? Eric moves yes. Martha seconds it. All in favor of the approving the agenda, speak your names. Eric. Martha. Liz. Anna. Seth. Steve. Okay. Agenda is approved. We can move forward unless anybody else has any comments. We can move forward to the first application, which is for 99 State Street, the Malone property. 99 State Street, LLC. Again, change of use from office to a bank and new signage. Refurbished Teller Window Landscaping and Restoration. Is there who would like to speak for the project and describe it to us? I guess I can do that. I'm the architect on the project. Okay, Jay. Um, I think it's a, it's a very good project because it's a very good building. And the sense here is to basically restore the building uh, so, Brent uh, Malone's very careful to make sure that the historic preservation issues are well met. We are doing careful repointing of the building, putting a new roof on it, uh, restoring the windows. We're not replacing the windows unless they're, two of them are quite rotted, and we will be matching those exactly with new windows by Upland Construction. There's still wood windows, single pane glass. And um, the... Um, Teller window that's being refurbished is actually being replaced. That's because the uh, current bank, which is Community National Bank, is going to be using a, a teller window drawer that doesn't use the uh, um, pneumatic tube that the previous bank used. The window's in the same place, but this window is uh, s slightly taller. And instead of being pushed forward in towards the driveway, it's actually in line with the original building wall. And so we will be repointing the bricks underneath that we're actually building the wall back where the bricks were removed to put in the current uh, drive-up teller to put a new drive-up teller in. The width is about the same. I think the height is a little bit taller and it goes up to the existing roof that was put over the little teller window. These are all shown on the uh, elevation drawing which I think you have as part of your packet. And the, uh, um, 
Interior is basically being fitted out for one tenant, which is actually the uh, bank. They're planning to use the entire building. It's still an office function, but it is technically a bank instead of individual offices. Uh, we are not changing the uh, site plan, I think, significantly other than raising the grade around a portion of it to get the window to be the right height. Uh, it's still the grades Elise has been working on to make sure that that all works and drains well. And um, I think it's a pretty straightforward project. It's the kind of thing that this is, you, re you really want developers to do exactly this kind of thing when you have such a good building to start with. So I would vote to go ahead and approve it. But I don't have a vote, sorry. Mr. Eric, I agree that uh, you know, the FEMA requirements would probably be cost prohibitive and the building would get torn down. I think it's a very good project for that building. And let, just holler if anybody wants to see anything in the application. I'm sure Alicia has stuff and I have stuff. So if anybody wants to see something in particular, we can pull it up on the screen. Um, and actually I should probably do that anyway so the public can see. Is there any, are there any specific drawings of new signage proposed? Yeah, I think if we look at the, uh, the it's actually that's it's supposed to be drawing, uh, I think 202, it's actually labeled as 201. Can you pull that up on the screen? Hold on one sec, I gotta go faster. It's in the package. And also, well, both elevations we should look at. I don't know if I can share my screen or not. There we go, there's 201. Yeah, they're both labeled 201. So if you can put both of those up, either one first, I can talk yep. about both of them. Yep. This is the proposed west elevation, existing and proposed. Yes. So is this the one, uh, one you want to talk about first? Yes, can't, but, uh, but you have the other screen up of the agenda, so I can't see what you're showing. Oh, huh. Okay, give me one second. Let me X that out. Meredith, if it helps, I can also do it. Well, yeah, because now that I'm sharing, I don't think you're ever going to. Oh, here we go. Hold on. Very often, Meredith, you'll need to, yeah, close it out and reopen it. Oh. There we go. Okay, can you can you scroll it small so you can see both the existing and the new? Yep. Okay, so if right there, whoops. There you go. Okay, the, what I did is the, the photograph at the top is exactly what it looks like now, or before some of the repointing was done. And the bottom one is what the intent uh, is to, um, you can see what the restoration would be. It basically is just repairing what's there. I want to point to the uh, the sign that is right in this area, um, which is an existing sign that says Community National Bank on it. That's on a remote ATM building that was put in by somebody to be able to put an ATM remote there. The, the bank is now going to have an ATM access from the public interest on the other side of the building. And this building will be removed, this new little building. It's it's cracked and it's not really a very good building, but it does have a very good granite cap on it. And it's a carved granite that has the name of the bank and this bank carved into it. So we would like to use that entire, I think it's eight feet, four inches long granite band and move it over underneath the uh, existing roof that's gonna be repaired pretty much like it is now. And it'll be above the uh, glass window, which is a bulletproof glass that uh, basically replaces the window that you can see that's there now. But this is a way to use the granite sign and not, not lose it. So that's one of the signs that's actually going to just uh, be moved over. And then the, the little drawing to the left shows a little light that's gonna be placed. There's a kind of a big sodium light under it now, which is up here. And we wanna replace that with just a little teeny LED light that's only five inches wide, five inches deep, and an inch and a half tall. So barely can see the light fixture, but it, 
it's going to be a 3000 K color temperature and it will uh, just provide light over that teller drawer. And again, this window, instead of being pulled forward, like the existing one is, it's going to be pushed back flush with the face of the building. Okay. The other, the other sign, if we go to the next sheet down, there's a, currently you can see at the existing, it says Vermont federal right up there, which is not the name of this bank. And it's carved into this granite arch, which I think is quite beautiful. And so what we want to do is leave the Fed Vermont federal sign there. So it's the new sign is reversible and we haven't destroyed anything, but the new sign I'm proposing would be made of brushed stainless steel with black etched letters. And the reference I'd like to call you to is the mouse in front of the library. Barb and I donated that mouse uh, 2014 to the library and Tom McCone wanted to put a name on it. So a few years later, I designed this sign so that Ryan Mays would get credit for sculpting the mouse. And uh, it's um, stainless steel. It has little pins in the back that just take an eighth of an inch into the granite to anchor it. And that way it is removable and you haven't uh, destroyed any of the uh, original granite arch that says Vermont Federal. I don't know if it said Vermont Federal when the building was built but that's what it says now. So we're not going to take that granite arch out, uh, but we are wanting to just put this new sign over it that says Community National Bank, and it has a little logo that the Community National Bank has there so that this spacing works out right. You notice the, uh, the our fan window is ex quite exquisite. The photograph is because it's very poorly painted right now. It's, it's like painted with one inch thick brush for three-eighths of an inch metal mutton that are nice curved mutton. So we're going to restore that with uh, paint the mutton black and uh, the side lights are also black and it's almost exactly identical to the bank two doors down at uh, I think it's 89 State Street where there's another bank. Um, but that whole front will be restored um, as it's shown there. So what we want to get approval for is the um, the moving the sign, the existing sign over underneath the window where the drive up window is, and then adding this basically a two part stainless steel sign. Now the keystone is pulled forward a little, about an inch and quarter in front of that. So we want the keystone to be prominent still, and we won't be covering that. So we'll just very, very subtly pulling the stainless steel sign about a quarter of an inch forward of the granite that it's in front of, that'll produce a nice shadow effect, a nice clean look, and it'll it'll signal that there's a new entity in this uh, property in a way that doesn't damage any of the historic character of the uh, the building. And there there's a lantern over the door now that's in the photograph. I did not draw it in the drawing because I didn't want to confuse what's there, but that lantern is, right now it has like two candelabra lights in it. We will just clean it and straighten it and basically we use it either with 3000 K candelabra LED lights or just incandescent lights. Um, and so that's, that's the proposal we want to have. There's an existing sign that's, uh, that's in the property that we want the ability to keep it for some reason, the bank wants to sublet or something like that. They would still have the ability of the, of a third sign that's already there. That's not showing up in my photograph, but that we wouldn't, we don't have any changes for that sign at this point. We just don't want, uh, to have to come back and apply for a new sign since it's already there. If the bank decides to not use it, then we probably would just take it down. Talking about the ground sign? Yes. Okay. Are painting of the mountains part of this project? Yes. Uh, we're also restoring the windows. They're in, in fairly good shape, but they need to be um, repaired and or restored. And the muntins and, and all of that restoration work is included. I think one reason that the number of the, you know, the submitted cost of the project came so high was because Pat Malone is intent on doing really good restoration, and that can be expensive if we do it right. He's we're having custom made windows to exactly match the other ones that are already there rather than getting something that's close from somebody that makes something close up in construction can match me exactly as they did for a couple of my other projects. And um, 
the the um, the all, all of the building is is being repainted and the bricks are being repointed. Um, and it, it's it's one of those buildings. Basically, it's straightforward. We're taking you know the roof is needing replacement. We're going to be replacing with asphalt shingles. The architectural series. Uh, basically the same color and look that's there now, except we do not want to have the kind of modern snow band that's across the front there, you see. We actually want the snow to stay on the roof so it doesn't drip off so much or slide off in a chunk. And uh, so we will be leaving that metal band there for just, because it's there, but we will be covering it with the asphalt shingles and those will be over a Grace's Ice and Water Shield so that it will be watertight. We're also putting an elevator inside the building, and that is in the back chunk of the building. Uh, does not, um, it doesn't interfere with any of the uh, historic rooms or historic features, and we designed it so that it does not penetrate the roof plane. That's why it's not right against the outside wall. And it's also located in a way that the, uh, the night deposit drop box and the uh, ATM machine can be accessed from the rear, uh, glass entrance, which is where the handicapped entrance is now. We're going to be making that basically that handicapped entrance is going to be rebuilt with um, uh, structural mullions because we want the, the enclosure to be a little bit longer than the other one. If we just go back, I think to the floor plan probably shows it best. Go up there. There you go. Right, right there. Uh, that's the second floor. We will have some, uh, the, the, um, condensing units for their handling system will sit on this lower flat roof area that sits behind the rest of the building which is well screened it's really hard to see that roof from anywhere and then on the first floor if we, you can to go to the a little bit further to the right first floor no that's the basement go up again oh, this isn't the first floor Oh, no, that's the first floor. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's the first floor. So you can see where the elevator, you, we're coming in the, the backside. There's some steps there now on a ramp that's going to be repaired. The steps are broken now. We're going to be replacing those to match what's there. And uh, you can see there's a space there for the uh, new ATM machine will be inside the airlock. And so it's secured there. And then there's a night deposit block box that is underneath the existing roof, but it's outside the uh, enclosure of the building. The roof is going to stay the same, except it has a broken gutter and downspout on it. We're going to take both of those off, and we don't think we need a gutter or downspout on that roof. And uh, there's a uh, an oil tank. Uh, uh, right now, the, the furnace is being removed, and we're going to be putting in a 250-gallon uh, a a uh, propane gas tank, which will be buried. It will be placed so that it avoids the roots of the trees that are in the backyard. And we th that will serve four fireplace inserts so that all four fireplaces, the front two rooms on both floors have very nice historic fireplaces in them. We're going to leave all the fireplaces there, but just do an insert that can also be removed and you haven't destroyed any of the fireplace mantle or anything putting them in. But it does provide a nice ambiance and it also provides makeup heat if um, really cold days. If, if the heat pump system is pushing too hard, that will add heat to the building to, um, to compensate for that. And um, it's, a nice, it's a nice look. And I used that same feature at an, another project and the only issue that the town had was that people drove by at night and they thought the place was on fire because those fires were going. But after a while, people realized it was not the case that the fires were just there because they were providing the only heat in the building, which was, that's the uh, Stephen Douglas birthplace in Brandon. So it's it's a functional feature that you can get warmth out of the fireplace. You can also program it with a remote control to just provide the visual flame without heat coming out. So it's a nice, nice feature. Jay, where are the compressors located for the heat pumps? They're on the second, they're on the roof of the, uh, basically at the floor level, second floor level. If you go one drawing up right there on the roof, the back roof that's over the, uh, the original airlock and then the new airlock, I mean, both of those there, you can see where the angle is there. They're going to be switched back. Uh, so they will basically be not visible. We needed to get them out of the floodplain anyway. And that's the only place we could get them out of the floodplain. We found if we put them up there, 
they're basically well screened by the building itself. The driveway is one way going opposite of this direction. So I, I think that people would be hard pressed to even find them if you say, go work on these condensers. I think people would have to ask where they were. They're not going to be visible. And okay. they just come, they're a Mitsubishi. They just come in a nice kind of tan, neutral color. And it'll be, there'll either be three or four. I think that the current thing we might need four because we want to make sure there's some heat in the existing stairways. And we'll probably put uh, put them in the bathrooms as well. So I think we'll have four instead of three. And one other question, is there a directional sign indicating the entrance on the right side of the building for people driving in and coming around to the drive up window? Um, I, I, if we would need one, I, I don't know if we would need one or not. I think most people kind of know that, but we could add one, I guess, if one was necessary, but we've not talked about that. Okay, just asking. I think when we're not planning one, I think that most people will quickly realize how you get in or out and around the building. Okay. The, the, the driveway now goes into the right-hand side between the building and the movie theater. And then it goes back to an on-site parking that is part of this project. We're not changing that. And then the uh, you, you make a clockwise turn around and you come back out onto uh, State Street again. Okay. And do you want to so talk a little bit about the landscaping being added? Say again? Talk about the landscaping being added? We, we're, we're, Alicia, why don't you discuss that part because that you're working on that. Sure. Um, yeah, so the, sorry, just because if you want to share sure. yourself so you can control it, is, would that help you? Yeah, a little bit. That'd be great. Okay, perfect. Hi, let me get it done. Um, sure. Everybody see it? Yeah. Okay. Um, so the we had our um, uh, certified horticulturalist Sarah of Equilibrium um, Design um, the the site um, landscaping, and so. As part of this project, we we don't have to do any new landscaping. It's not required. But as you know, coming into this new building, um, Mr. Malone really wants to to beautify it, um, as can be seen by actually taking care of the uh, historic components of the building itself. But then also just adding a few shrubberies um, to help stop in the front and kind of make it a little more appealing. So um, I am not a landscape plant buff, um, so I'm not going to pretend that I am, but this is, these are the plans that um, Sarah provided for us, and we think that they're, um, they're kind of in the minimalist scheme. We don't want to take away from the building, but just kind of add some beautification to it is what we were looking to do. So we're planning on keeping the existing large trees in the front and the rear, um, so in the back here we have the um, rear trees kind of highlighted. So there's a few extra shrubbery types so some ferns um this one has a pretty blue pink excuse me blue purple flower to it um some greenery scattered around underneath the foliage of the um of the main trees and then similarly in the front so this is this is state street here these are existing shrubs existing tree and then these small purple and then other plantings here um are additional and the existing benches you can see are these kind of blue um, colors. So we're just looking to kind of spruce things up a little without going crazy. There's a lot of pavers um, out in this front and a uh, um, concrete sidewalk and so we're not looking to to disturb that. It kind of gives its um, uh, welcomes from from more than just the the main sidewalk it kind of welcomes you from the, the whole part front of the parcel. Um, so we're looking to do those landscaping portions um, for now. I guess there's some pink ones too. OK. 
Okay, thank you. Um, Steve, this is Meredith. I know that uh, John Snell had some comments he wanted to make on landscaping tree questions. I don't know if you want to hear from John at this point or if you want the applicant to keep talking about other aspects of the application. I, I could I could comment, I think, briefly on what was discussed. You know, John met with us on site and he's concerned that the uh, you know, the trees may have some trouble, but I think we wanted at this point to defer those decisions until we really, really understand what's there. I don't think we're necessarily opposed to taking out the pavers and doing some other things, but for this approval of this permit, we'd like to go ahead with what's proposed here. And we're, we're not ruling out changing that as we get more information about the trees and perhaps taking them out and doing a different plan. Right, and, uh, and as part of this, this I'm sorry to interrupt, the, um, there is a plan to have an, a professional arborist come. Um, he's been coordinating back and forth. Their schedules are very busy. Um, so we have that plan at a minimum, cutting the uh, dead limbs that are off, cut them off. If it's starting to look really um, pathetic, we'll, we'll take, some, take that into account to see how quickly we look at moving forward with a different landscaping plan for right now. We're looking to keep those large trees and see what we can do with them um, and, and keep that um, grandeur that's there and add to it. But um, we want to do the research and make sure that there aren't other options before we start cutting things down. But I know John is on the call, so I feel like we kind of interrupted him. Sorry about that. Did, did John Snell want to make a comment at this point? I'd be happy to. Am I live now? Yes. Great, thank you. Go ahead, um, John. Thank you very much, Steve. I'm, I'm thrilled that this project's going ahead and with uh, such uh, talent and uh, vision. That building is a gorgeous building that's been uh, unfortunately neglected for a number of years. From my point of view as chairman of the tree board, the two trees in front have also been neglected. They're tough trees uh, to deal with anyway, Norway maples, and they've declined to the point where they really have become hazardous. Um, I spoke uh, on site the other day and the folks are uh, appreciate that fact and are gonna have that dealt with immediately. And that's my only request at this point. I have no interest in, in holding this project up. I would love at some point in the future to come back and, and look again at how we might replace those trees because they are in decline and you know will never be what they potentially could have been. Um, but that's, that's for another day. Uh, for right now, I think they can uh, do some pruning and, and get the trees in a safe condition and they'll be okay, uh, you know, for the foreseeable future. And we can talk about what's next when, when that's appropriate. I, I, okay. I think what could make sense on this approval is to have approval of what's here or a future plan. If we were to change, if we were to take the trees out, you know, then I think that we would have different plants because they would need to take the sun instead of the shade, which is what the landscape architect we met with was, was saying as well. But I think if we can get approval for either or, so we don't need to come back for a whole new permit and just give us that flexibility to do it properly, if we want to take the pavers out or not, that that should be the owner's decision. I, I, that, I think that would make sure the product could go ahead forward and there wouldn't be this caveat of not doing something because we said we would or would not keep the trees. Are, are we including language to, to stabilize the tree? I think we want to. I think we want language that we will assess the trees and then do the proper thing. I don't. I think we we're not going to do anything controversial about it. Just a matter of we don't want to get locked into doing anything at this point because we haven't done all the research necessary. Um. So can I? This is Meredith. Can I come in for just a second? Um. So the the you know the, the design review committee can look at the landscaping and. Um, apply the design review criteria to that. The development and review board will be looking at the project, including all of the landscaping provisions um, in two weeks. 
I, I'm not sure, Jay, that that the I don't know if the Development Review Board can approve alternative landscaping plans without seeing what the alternative yes, landscaping yeah. we plan just, is. We can just see with what we have, and if we change in the future, we we'll do that later. But let's yeah, and that, that's, I know that's that wants to leave it as it is for now. I mean, it's, he's already spending a huge amount of money, and Wait, well, it's a matter of going forward with the project. What I was also going to say is that if all you're doing in the future is just tweaking the landscaping plan with a tiny change in impervious surface. That's probably going to be an administrative permit, okay. um, and it might not, you know, maybe it would have to go through design review, but it would really depend on what you're doing. Okay. Um, because usually what triggers design review is a change to the structure. Um, so just changing the landscaping isn't necessarily changing the structures. And we certainly would, would um, coordinate with Meredith and her team to, to make sure that if a design review committee meeting is appropriate for any changes, we would do that. Development review board, we will we'll do the right things. But definitely, we want to we want to move forward with the plan that we submitted, existing trees, and we'll we'll do the um, assessment and a minimum tri trimming of the hazardous pieces, um, and certainly evaluate the longevity of the remaining uh, remainder of the trees. Thank you. Just wanted to clarify. Okay, and that's that's noted in the application that the existing trees will be pruned and then evaluated in the future, and they will come back to to the develop to the office uh, possibly for an administrative approval if they need to get changed or replaced. We'll make sure it's clear in the record. Okay, great. Thank you. Does anyone else on the, any of the other committee members have any other comments, questions, or suggestions? I do. Um, can we go back to the main entry, the Muntins? You mentioned black, Jay, for a color. Is that based on historical information yes, i first was thinking they'd be white and then pat had told me he wanted to make them black and i asked him why he walked me over to the building next door because they're metal they're not wood they were originally wrought iron and left black and we want to restore them to be that okay thank you thank you for that clarification it, it, it what i think it's, if you walk carefully i think i have not seen a building with this exquisite of an entryway in Montpelier, except for the sister building two doors down, which is almost identical. Um, it's What's awkward about this one is uh, it's so terribly painted now, they look like they're big fat wooden mutton, but you can see they're curved. And they are curved because they're uh, wrought iron. And, uh, and then in the side lights is also a very ornate kind of a detail of how that's divided with wrought iron as well. So those are both black. If you want to see what it looked like, if you go two doors down, it'll look exactly like that because they look exactly like that now, except one's white and one's black. Jay, Jay, did you do any paint scrapings on those at all? No. Because I mean, the, the effect of having them black is you're going to lose the visibility of the uh, intricate design. Well, at first thought we would, Eric, but I wasn't sure of that. I think that the, the, the one of the things that I didn't like about them being painted is because the paint itself covers up a lot of the delicateness that is actually in the metal itself. And I think, I think what we want to do is to research that further as well, do some removal of the paint that's there. We wouldn't be adding to what's there. It needs to be removed. We can assess that again, but I think that we'd like to restore to what I think the original was. Okay. Any other comments or questions from committee members? Yeah, this is Liz. I just wanted to say I think it's is a, a really great preservation project, and um, it'll be fun to watch the progress. But uh, you have a wonderful building to work with, and you certainly are preserving it. So we are. Thank you. That, thank you for that, Liz. But I think it's actually. I think. I think Pat Malone isn't one to toot his own horn much, but he's doing an amazing job of making sure that this is done right. And I appreciate yeah. being uh, asked to work with him on it. Yeah, that's terrific. Thank you. 
Is there anyone else from the public that would like to ask a question or bring any thoughts forward? I don't, the only, everybody who's on has spoken. Okay. Then I can go through two of the criteria recommendation forms. The first one would be for the design review form for the building and the preservation and changes. The evaluation criteria number one was preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style if the proposed projects in the historic district or involves an historic structure, acceptable. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials with other properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility of the proposed landscaping, acceptable. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, there's really no change in the utilities other than the window, the teller window. So we'll call that acceptable. Recognition of and respect for view corridors and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house, acceptable. All in favor of the application as proposed, speak your names. Eric. This is Martha, I say yes. Lance, yes. Anna says yes. Seth, yes. And Steve says yes. Okay, that part portion is passed. The next portion is for the signs. Again, the, the criteria, number 1A, preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style if to propose projects in the historic district, acceptable. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials with other properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping, uh, that was approved with the building. It's not involved with the signs. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities. There are no change in regard to the signs themselves. Again, that was part of the building. Recognition of and respect for view corridors and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house, acceptable. Informance with cityscape placement and design recommendations, acceptable. Compatibility with subject property and adjacent properties, acceptable. Shall not obscure significant architectural details, acceptable. Consistency and uniformity of multiple signs in CB2 and OP, not applicable. Illumination, not applicable. Pennants and banners prohibited, not applicable. Individual letters affixed, painted, or engraved directly on the building or structure are encouraged, acceptable. All in favor of these sign proposals, again, speak your names. Eric, yes. This is Martha, yes. Yes, yes. Hannah, yes. Seth, yes. And Steve, yes. So Meredith, do you want to note when the it will move to the development review board meeting? Yep. Uh, so we've got, it's a little complicated. We're going to have the two uh, recommendation forums. I'm going to send those out, Alicia, to probably you and Pat. So just a acknowledgement that you received them and that you're you know good with them. I mean, there's no recommendations on here, so it's not that complicated. So probably just an acknowledgement that you've received them. Um, and that will all go in the packet that goes to the Development Review Board on July 20th. And I will see you, Alicia, and you, Jay, there, I'm sure. And um, John, you can come if you, is John even still on anymore? Nope, John signed off. Uh, I, I want to make one more clarification, if I could, in our application. 
okay. we have in the narrative that we may want to add uh, custom made shutters to match the original design. We were researching what the original shutter design was. Uh -huh. That's in the photograph of that. We want the permission to add real shutters on the building. Um, but we don't, we do not want to be required to put real shutters on the building. Was that part of the application that that was yes. an option for you? Where was that? I think, I think I remember seeing that in here, but I don't, we didn't discuss it. Uh, I to clarify it so that we can get permission to do that. We saw in one of the drawings that you were going to use some existing hardware if you were going to hang shutters. Yes, we are. We know that the hard they were there because the pins are still there on all of the windows. Yes. And the windows in back are slightly narrower than the ones in the front. But uh, the issue is um, Pat believes that they were originally adjustable shutters as opposed to ones that just are fixed. And he has a photograph that would tell us that. He's researching to find that and we'll see. But uh, And we're also getting the shutters priced out. But they, they wouldn't be just applied to the side of the buildings. They actually would function and close like real shutters. Jay, would they go all around the building or just on the front? They would go all around except for the four that would be behind where the condenser on the top in the back because you, you can't see those windows from anywhere. And one of them is a really teeny window. So, But they would be all of them. There it is right there. So I don't think it should hold up the application or anything. But I just wanted to clarify that it's in there in case you all didn't read it. So when you see shutters on there, you won't be surprised. OK, we can make a notation on the criteria sheet. OK. And that is that is an option to you to yes, I just want to put put shutters it back on the building that, that uh, duplicate the originals. Yes. OK. Uh, this is Liz. I was just curious, what color do you think the shutters would be? Um, we're trying to find out from the photograph that's probably black and white, but I suspect they would traditionally would be black. That was normally the case. Okay. Okay. We can note that also with the option for the shutters. Okay, thank you. Anything else that needs to be added at this point? Well, now that I appreciate you all supporting this project, it's good for you all that live in Montpelier. It's going to make it a better place to be. Well, good. Well, thank you for your work on the project and good luck moving forward. Thank you. Yep. Good, good project. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Okay, thank you all. Thanks again. See you in two weeks, Alicia and Jay. So, I didn't hear what you said. Say again, please. I said see you in two weeks. Okay, okay. <laughs> Thanks again. Has everyone had a chance to look at the me minutes of the meeting of June the 15th? Yes, and I'll move them. This is Eric. Do I hear a second to approve the minutes? I'll second it. This is Martha. Okay. All in favor of the minutes, again, speak your name. Eric, yes. Yeah. Steve? I wasn't there. Anna, yes. Liz. Death, yes. Okay, the minutes are approved. Does anyone, does anyone else have anything to bring forward? Otherwise, our next meeting is on the 20th of July. Thank you.
Thank you, Meredith. You're welcome. Thank you all. Do I do I hear a motion to adjourn? Eric moves. Hannah seconds. All in favor of adjournment, again, speak your names. Eric. Martha. Miss. Hannah. Seth. And Steve. Thank you all. Thank you. Adios. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Bye. 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 Good night.